patriotism. Yep. Uh, Mayor Roger Perry. Yep. Uh, Council President Adina Oliveris. Present. Councilor Jeff Hensley. Here. Councilor Ray Jackman. Here. Councilor Brian Lewis. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I have a motion to pay the bill. Do we want to do visitors? Oh, oh yes, visitors. visitors. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, visitors, please state your name so we can get on record. Sure. Lewis. Mike Miller. Ken Barkley. Lisa Parsons. Joseph Parsons. Can ever share some website? One more. Peter Kelser, monitor. I think one of the medical chairs. Yeah. 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 Oh, Ray has to abstain. Oh, yes, that's right. Okay, so he didn't, he didn't say anything. Yeah. There we go. Okay, and motion carries. Okay, I've got a motion in second minutes from last meeting. Thank you. Motion to accept the minutes. Second, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, now we're going to go right in there. Yeah, we're going to go on down. We got that. So, okay. Do I have to move? Yes. So we have a couple of flags recognizing our counselors for their service. Thank you. So who makes the grand first? I want to say a word. I'm yeah, sure. I'll just work. These two gentlemen have really done a lot for the city to keep us going in really hard time to give us a wealth of information and to give up themselves an extra time. And I just, as hopey as it is, I would like to give them a call. Yeah. I mean, this is nothing you get paid for. You spend a lot of time doing it and it's very appreciated. I'll still be here, so. <laughs> and I'm not getting rid of you yet. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, no. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 I was for the Constitution of the United States of America, the United States of America, the Constitution of the State of Oregon, the Constitution of the State of Oregon, the Charter of the City of Soto, the Charter of the City of Soto, the Law is enacted there under, the Act there under, and I will faithfully perform, and I will faithfully perform the duties of mayor, the duties of mayor to which I have been elected, which I have been elected. Congratulations, Mr. Okay. All right. Sorry. Ah. Oh. Okay. Ready to write it. I the city council swear that they swear Please don't do a wrong here. I don't suppose. I don't suppose. You swear or affirm? You do swear. And I will support the Constitution. I'll support the Constitution. The United States of America, the United States of America. Constitution of the state of Oregon, the Constitution of the state of Oregon, the Charter of the City of Citadel, the Charter of the City of Citadel, for the laws enacted therein, and the laws there enacted under, and I will faithfully perform, and I'll faithfully perform the duties of counselor, the duties of counselor, to which I have been elected. Okay. 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 
sign sign yours. Sign yours. I'm doing this. Go ahead. You go. It looks. I'm surprised. It's no Ten inches. Yeah. 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 No, it's the term is four years. Okay. No swearing. Dean and I came on at the same time. So, yeah. So, you can say congratulations on your new thing. Yeah. Well, you know, big work here. Right. We think everything is in order. It's American. We congratulate everybody. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, well, we got you we have public comment. So this is the time to speak to the city council or the mayor on any subject, including what is listed on the agenda, except for public hearings. Time limit is three minutes per person. Um, I'm Tina Bershares, and I'm the executive director for Habitat for Humanity um, in Lebanon. And we are building a home up on Ridge, the very right. end of Ridge. And so I just wanted to come down and introduce myself. Welcome to the new um, mayor. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, just let you know that you know we're, we're here to support you guys. And and if there's any questions with anything, um, this is my one of my my board vice president uh, David, and then my project manager Mike. Um, Miller, who works with that, uh, with our construction foreman that's up top, um, and CSU youth build this up there. Some kiddos we have up there that are doing some training um, and learning how to to build homes. So um, we own that piece of property, and then the city had also gifted us the piece of property that's right behind the charter school. And hopefully, I say in less than a year or so, we should be starting some something down there if we can get some things taken care of. And I think I talked to Alex about some of that stuff. So. But we just wanted to come and introduce ourselves and let you know that we were here. And if there's any questions about anything, to give us a call or to meet with us, and we'll be. I have two questions. I'm always a question to ask. Mm -hmm. You're good. <laughs> I'm not familiar with much. Of it. Are you? When do you expect this property to be inhabitable? And do you guys already know who gets it? For yes, we have a family. Um, uh, uh, the McMahons, and they have two children, a teenage son. Um, that's. 13 and one that is four. Um, and they they're coming from Sweet Home, um, just the outer skirts of Sweet Home. So our geographical service area is Lebanon through to Sweet Home and Brownsville. I serve all of Eastland County is where I build homes at. Um, and so we do we pick the family in October. Um, they're they have we just have certain parameters that they have to fall within. And then we're hoping the house will be finished by the end of June, but um, we're not sure. We've run into some issues. Um, we're still pushing for that June date, but we're not sure if that's going to happen or not. Awesome. So we're going to drink Rocky up there huh, sometimes. <laughs> Yes, but that's good. I mean, it, I, it's fine. It's it lays us a good foundation to be able to. The one I'm worried about is the one in St. Louis. It's yeah. a little watery down there. So, because um, we traded you guys the mountainside over here yes. for, um, I think Judy, the council at the time. I just, I just want to kind of push to save the old store building because I want to speak. It's, it's been here as long as I live, and they, you guys have talked about having to tear it down to put a house in there. I didn't, have that house in there. I didn't either. I've been with I'm that since 2004 uh, or 2007, 
and I've been the ED for um, almost seven years. And I was very disappointed when my current board at that time wanted to destroy that building. I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. um, a, pre a previous mayor and stuff used to want to, uh, the city mission mm -hmm. wanted that building destroyed too. And I, I put a big, like, big job down as long as I could also. Yeah. And we were happy to get rid of all of the other structures that were not good there. And we did, I didn't really didn't want that one to go bye bye. I'm all about history um, and preserving that history. So. I've been here over close to 50 years, and that's really been sitting there just as good as straight and solid as it is. It's right very now. solid inside. Yes, it, it would be wonderful to be able to see it re redone so that it could be a museum or some something to that. Yeah, effect. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Well, well give us a call. Yeah. We help with all kinds of stuff. So let we, us know. We might let you know. We got lots yeah. of volunteers that like to work on that kind of stuff. And that's what we do. We help in our communities. So um, by all means, let us know because we have lots of volunteers and, and different things that we work with to do well, stuff. Thank you. That okay. Thanks yeah. Welcome to the community. Thank we you. Can, we um, might grab you for, we need a fence that needs to go up around uh, Claybury. <laughs> we need bodies. Okay. Yeah, let us um, let us know. Reach out to Mike. Uh, we can leave our business cards. I think Alex has knows everything about Mike and myself. Um, so let him know, and he can definitely reach out to us, and, and we'd be more than happy to help in, in the community because you're part of our community. So. Yeah. Okay. Real quick, I just I'm David Ramsdale, by the way, I'm, I'm vice president, also a contractor. Um, I cannot express what I truly believe as our mission and the importance behind it. And so we truly appreciate the, the help and everything that you guys have given us so far. Um, we truly look forward to this entire area of the work and build on land that to create uh, affordable housing for families in a way that doesn't condense them into a tiny little brick with about 50 other people. You know, we truly believe in, in housing, not apartments, not, you know, maybe- and living, one, living not yes, yes. Yeah. And, and so, so our mission isn't to build to to we're not out there trying to make a bunch of money. It's not we're a nonprofit for a reason, right? So, uh, but we can't do it without you guys. So again, we just, I just wanted to personally thank you guys for everything and congratulations. Is there any kind of like a grand opening or something that we can come and support when the house is ready? We will do a dedication. There's a home dedication that we do do. Um, so we'll do that um, when we hand the keys over to the family. Okay. Nice big old spread of food and. Have community members and people come. Awesome. Yes, and please come visit and talk to our foremans up there and the kids. just come up and see what they're doing. And um, because we would love to involve the community. Yep. Um, if you want to volunteer, just let Mike know and you know, you never know what you want to do. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may, well, you guys let us know if we can do anything for you. I sure appreciate sure. it. Thank you. We appreciate what you guys do. I want to say the Habitat crew has been really good about communication. You are really quick to answer the phone and email, so you are perfect partners for the city. Thank you so much for what you do. Yeah, we, we enjoy, I enjoy working with you on things, um, city ordinances and different things that we've had to deal with, yeah. with some stuff. And um, I appreciate the communication as well, because I did get a lot of that with the previous um, and some problems. So I appreciate what you're doing, Alex. <laughs> Totally. Immensely. Yeah. Yeah. And JD. JD. You. Yes. You yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Is there any other comments from the public? Yeah. Nothing? No. Yeah. <laughs> any comments on the. That's it. Well, we had a pretty good day out here with the county sheriff. He said over here by the old store, he caught probably between 12 to 15 cars. Oh, yeah. That's a darn laugh. That was going about an hour and a half time. Go like that. Yes. Well, we do write tickets. Good. It wasn't during the school hours. So it was between one and two. Right. Right. Before they let out a little bit during the let out the baby. My question is 
is if they're if they've stopped them and given the ticket, does that mean that they're actually going to be out here more? That's the question I would like answered. We're working on that. We had a meeting and we talked about all the signage in town. You remember last time that we talked that we would want more signage? They legally can't do any more signage than what we have. And so they're going to help us with control. Joe? That idea that you had of buying those signs and no. putting them on your yeah. property Legal. was that you? Legally, you can't do it. What? You can't. Yeah. They've got a book and it's called sign pollution. Oh, God. The law that says that you can't put more signs than what the law says you need. On Stop. my property. Sciences are also. My property. This is If it's on your property, mm -hmm. you can't be on the roadway, but mm -hmm. it's on your property. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's yeah, yeah. I put it up on my old cat, can't I? It's uh, Mr. Mayor, I wanted to recommend the council vote to suspend the agenda and open item 10B, city audit. Our city auditor is here to present. Otherwise, we're going to have a lot of stuff to do. And uh, I just think it would be courteous to let him present first. So there will have to be a motion to suspend and open that item. I make a motion that we suspend and open item number 10B. Is that what we said? Or yep. 10? 10, uh, 10 B. 10 B to give the auditor the opportunity to address the forum. In favor? Aye. Okay. Um, so my name is Steve Yonser. I've been here a few years now. So I appreciate it. Um, it's been a lot of transition the last few years, um, which is partly why we're in January and we're still trying to finish it up. Um, there's just a lot of um, recording of transactions in different ways throughout the year of under audits. We're doing the audit from um, July 1 to June 30th of 22. Um, so there's a lot of transactions that we had to really kind of figure out where they should be. Um, just because of multiple people doing bookkeeping. Um, that's why we're a little delayed. Um, it's not anyone's fault, it's just the reality of the situation. Um, so overall, I, I think it was a fairly clean audit. Um, there are a couple small findings, some of which you always will have. Um, the segregation duties and the fact that we have to write to report those two items it's just the reality of a small city that um, you don't have enough steady staff to have really strong segregation duties. You're not always going to have one person that does the majority of the transaction activity. Um, the fact that the, the council is re reviewing everything is very important in a city of the size. And it's the only reason that the risk related to segregation of duties is low. Um, if that was not happening, we could have significant issues. Um, so I just wanted to, to everyone to be aware of that and just keep doing what you're doing and reviewing every transaction that you can. That includes payroll and revenues and, and expenses. Um, so uh, the other couple of issues that we found um, are, are related really to um, the transition. Um, so there's some accrual payroll in the transaction and figuring out how to really report home state applicants for JD and Alex, make sure those numbers are accurate. Um, we use the QuickBooks numbers. And I'm not quite sure that's truly what it should be. Um, so it would be worth kind of evaluating that process of patient pay and so forth, and making sure you're really reporting that in an accurate manner. Um, are you saying that's not being done now? You couldn't find that or what? So, so there's a number in QuickBooks as of 6.30, but 
given the amount of people of time people are working and have when they started, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure that number is accurate. Um, just because JD and Alex started not for, for a full year based on your policy that we have a record as of 2013, which is the last one we know about. Um, it, it doesn't seem like it, it's an accurate number. Um, so we can go into more detail on, you know, it, it's just purely an hour number and then we have to multiply it, you know, and so forth. So it would be worth kind of reviewing that policy on vacation and making sure just for next year that you have um, the hours added here. That makes sense. Um, yeah, I thought we already went through and discussed that, and I thought we were already on track with that, but it sounds like that's still a gap. Yeah, I, I think it's a little bit of that gap. I think it's you've, you've switched to having someone else do your payroll, which I think is a good move. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just making sure that when she's recording that payroll, it's, it's completely accurate. And so I think there is probably still a tiny gap in just reviewing payroll um, and making sure. And after we met that time, we started with Alex um, noting his times and JD, what, what days they're working and hours and stuff. So. so so it may be that you resolved this. I mean, this was- I think there's still improvement. You can have. This was seven months ago yeah. in, in real time. So, um, okay. so that's one little thing. And then the mm -hmm. other, Small issue what you have with having over expenditure related to all the spending you had to do for food and water. Um, so it's, you know, ideally you would monitor that and make adjustment with your budget. Um, so you don't actually technically have lower expenditure, but I know in the water situation that's very hard to do. So it, it's just a minor, a technical violation, but not something I'm really worried about. So, Has it been difficult um, the transition between the whole administration and the new administration to try to figure that out? Um, so much last year's okay. audit, the one that ended June 21 was very difficult. We didn't finish it until June of 22. So that was really the one that was problematic on what numbers were going by. Um, this last year, I think Alex and the bookkeeping that's been done has really cleaned up the numbers and, um, and the process. And so it's not, I apologize, I'm still covering it. But, <laughs> um, but I think it's it's definitely improving. Um, it's not 100% there, but it's definitely, there's a lot of improvement that I've seen. And you can see it in the, in the financials if you look you know, <laughs> July 21 and to June of 22, that as you start to move through the calendar year, you can see improvement in just the recording of things, you know, and the record. <laughs> and I think the way that the accounts are changed and different and a little more streamlined, I think really helped too. Yeah, yeah. So I do, I want to mention one thing about your budget for the 22, 23 year. You got rid of all your funds. And we, we talked about that back when we met, but I'm a little concerned about what happens with your old funds. So there's money in your water fund and you never moved it out back to the general fund. And so and I'm not sure how you're gonna handle Higher day fund, which is what your water it's a business fund, your water fund is a business fund, and how to move it to general fund activity. So I'm not 100% sure that's the right thing. So um, you may want to revisit that and at least create a water fund again, just to be a clear structure of what you're doing. Um, and I should have brought that up when we talked. That I just, and we have to think through all of the scenarios. Um, but when you have a business fund, which is what water is, you you, supple, you you record things slightly differently at a different level, and you treat it like it's just any other business. Um, 
the, the Kemi Har Hebrew Adventure Journal Fund, which is the document. Um, so nobody wanted to commit like that. They're saying that most of our money going into the general fund that we get dispersed to the the water fund. So the the way the water fund works is all the, the water fees go right into the water fund, mm -hmm. and then the expenses related to providing that service are expense in the water fund. Okay, so it's all related to the water fund. Um, previously, you had three funds: you had the general fund, right. the street fund, and the water fund. Mm -hmm. The street fund. It, I can see both sides of that. It is a governmental fund, but the money you get from the state for transportation costs is restricted. It has to be used for street with federal activity. So that's why a fund was created for the street. You could do it in the general fund, but then you have to make sure that all the money that's coming from the state is treated as restricted. So you have to make sure it's listed that way. That's why most of the time people create a street fund. It's just for that straight restricted portion. Um, but it does complicate things, so I can understand why you might have to use the general fund. It just will give you more, it cause more um, overhead, make sure that money is being straight, but just on street related activities. So your recommendation is that three funds, the general street and the water. Yeah, it'll so be back had, to what we were. Yeah, yeah, I think we do. Yeah, There's a yeah. good reason why we voted yeah. to go that direction. But yeah. as far as yeah. your recommendation, strictly you think it's better. Auditor, I think it's probably better. It's an easier way to track those three different types of activities. Um, but I can definitely see, especially with the general and street. Reasons not to do it. Okay. So I'm a little less 100% great time. Still needs to be open for discussion, it sounds like. <laughs> That's something I will start working on as I plan the next budget, just figuring that out. Part of the, the problem with the historical budgets is that all those, there were a lot of just numbers that I can only describe as fictitious mm -hmm. in there. Oh. I, I don't know where they came from. I could back to silence. Believe me, our records for several just, years back to bigger values. So maybe next year we can have a clean start where we sim simplify that and make it easier for everybody to track. Yeah. So, anyways, because of the way your budget is for this year, it's going to be a complicated audit next year. Um, I'm not quite sure how much that will. You love your job. Yeah. <laughs> so, is there anything in the first part of the budget? You know, the first portion because like I said that was under a transitional period is there anything that you felt was you know kind of out of the ordinary um in terms of actual transactions that we're talking yeah. about mm -hmm. um I didn't see a lot I do I mean there was a few things some taxes recorded in strange spots is really the biggest thing so, um, so we had to kind of we, we expect some taxes to show up every quarter and we had to find it on the LGIP and really find out where it was, but everything was there. It just was not in where it was. Um, you know, and I know you've been concerned somewhat about permits and that, and that kind of activity. Um, we did not see anything that was significant, but I have to admit, permits in terms of your city budget is, is a pretty small dollar amount. So it's not something others would have test a lot and um, we did some testing to see if the controls are in place but the dollar amount means it's not something that we look at significantly okay. so the firm has been doing it for years and years and years um so i started with the firm in 2015 um and so I slowly shifted. And so now I'm kind of the, the partner that does all the audits. Um, That's so, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's pretty much year round that I'm doing audits. I mean, I do a lot of tax work this time of year too, but um, so that's just the reality of my job. Um, I never seem to have mm -hmm. Sounds fun. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we make you get good at it. Huh? 
definitely. He's beyond my toes. So I don't know if you have questions on the actual financials. Um, it, it seems like things are going similar to previous years. Um, so but I'm willing to go and if you have any questions on disclosure or anything. Um, um, and then right off there, I know, like I said, I mean, so is the audit complete? Is that what you're saying for 2022? It so has been completed. Complete. So yeah. we're gonna, yeah. the next step would be that we need people to approve it here. Um, and then we will release it at the end of the month. And that will be the final process. So we need to entertain a motion to go through the end. I don't think we've had an opportunity to really review it. Yeah, we've we got new members. <laughs> I haven't been excited. Yeah. So what happens if we go until next month? Um, so <laughs> we, <laughs> so the we can attempt to get a new uh, extension. Um, the, previously, we get an extension all the time. Ever since we have a new person at the Secretary of State's office, you have to have just cause. What just cause means, I don't really know. So we kind of negotiate and try to get an extension. Um, whether that would actually happen, I don't know. But just review. How long do you have to have this approved? So, well, so our extension is through the end of January. So we possibly have a, a Meeting, yeah. special yeah. meeting or something like that, or a tele meeting on this to approve it if everyone gets a chance to read all the stuff. Then, yeah. I think that's correct. Yeah, do we want to set that next Thursday? Huh? Next Thursday, yes, I don't know. Mayor or anybody else, we want to do it. Yeah, next Thursday, the 25th. Yeah. We need to review something, we should, but it might be a I mean, is there anything that you can think of that, I mean, it's, like I say, I mean, he's already had extensions out in the same program. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, what's your question? I was going to say, is there anyone that you really think that we need to focus our attention through this this report? This is the total, this is the full report, right? Right. Um, so, I mean, I always look at um, the so page 14 and and 16 and then so the, I, I always kind of look at the general numbers and you can see um in, you know that as a proper loss kind of statement on page 16 for the general and I don't want to be threatened. I mean, you have a, 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 a profit. And you always want it as a city, you don't necessarily always be a profit, but you need to have something that's reasonable, so you're not having hemorrhaging cash for years and years. So I always look at the um the fund balance to be surprising. So you have the general on street fund, and then you, later you have the water fund. And so as long as those are sufficient to for your future work, I think that's really the key. Um, there are pages and pages of notes. Most of it is required by governmental accounting standards and they keep adding things. So it's not something I would necessarily feel like you need to read every single note. Uh, it makes one's eyes cross. Right. Yeah. So it's really the budget actual stuff at any report. Those should match exactly what you're getting on the monthly basis. And then these kind of overall reports to kind of give you a sense of the, of the, of the city's financial position overall, which we put our focus on. But there are, there is no like not constant absences. Take questions on that. You can look and see exactly what. That's what I was kind of referring to because you know I haven't read through all of it, but I you know kind of breezed through it, and you know it's definitely written in legal terms. So you know I mean trying to decipher as to exactly what then thou and shall be right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's just unfortunate the way we have to write these reports. 
as well. Yeah. But yeah, so I would, you know, the areas that we've kind of already touched on, I would say the absences, you know, the crew liability kinds of issues. Um, so we should kind of look at those notes. Okay, cool. So thank you. I, I think delaying it would be more for you since you're new, if you felt like it. Well, because I think the rest of us have read this already and have been here before. Um, but I want to honor you if that's something that you would like us another week to wait through this. And no, I'm sure, I don't know what I would find because I'm not a tech person. I can't. I mean, the budget is budget. You know, I just audit. You said you didn't have anything glaring that, you know. That's because none of us got to put us all in jail over, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. I would like to make a motion to approve the audit. Yeah. 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 You got a motion to yeah, approve the audit. Is anybody want to second it? Oh, you got to ask. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll second it. <laughs> All, All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Peter and his team have been excellent to work with. So thank you so much for all your help. Sure. We appreciate you so, making the trip yeah. up here. Oh, oh, yeah. Of course, you know, and I'm always available for anyone in the community to <laughs> questions. I mean, this becomes a connect, uh, public record, so anyone can look at it. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I was going to, I wouldn't mind giving me a call. I've been on budget committee a couple times and just to educate myself on, on things. But one of the things last time or time before so that, yeah, I think it was. Um, talked about how there was training available. There were classes coming up and she was supposed to get back to us with a date and never did. Is that, is there training still available? So we'll have to look. So typically those budget, um, Trainings occur in January and February. Okay. So they should be occurring right now. I'll, I'll look. Okay. Um, send Alex a email tomorrow. Um, I apologize. I got this. That's right. You never get educated in that. So, so, and those are free and they're, they're just around the state. You know, by the, uh, oh, they've finally been posted online. So, uh, the next one's on February 7th. They'll have two in February and three in March. Awesome. So I will just go ahead and email that to everybody. all right so alex you have a three document over yes and then i'm surprised oh thank you perfect thank you yeah i will get i will uh get everything signed tomorrow thank you thank you be careful. I have a auditor. I just hired that's like six eight. Don't bring him to some. <laughs> you know, if there's anybody else that he uh, stay for the whole community, you're more than welcome to come here. Conversation quite entertaining. I may have to come up visit you sometimes after this. Yeah, they're going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got the foundation made out of the table. So, you know, faster as we go along. So, you get up there on the way, get those trees out of the side of the clock on it, sitting up there. Oh, the trees are put down. Yeah. Well, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so uh, the finance, finance reports were included in the packet as always. Anybody have any questions about it? Um, we were able to get the, the accountant schedule synced up with our meetings this time. The last two months, they're just 
happened to be like a scheduling quirk where she just wasn't able to get the reconciliation done quite in time, but we were able to sync it up correctly. So reconciliation reports were included for everyone. Um, that was that. Um, let's see. So uh, I've had a couple of meetings uh, with our new mayor and commissioner Will Tucker over at uh, Lynn County. He's actually come here and we've made some progress on a few things. So first off, all the property tax, the back taxes are taken care of. Good day. Yep. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. That was great. Yep. Lynn County uh, took care of it. He took it to the commissioners, and the commissioners decided to pay it for us. So it's all closed out. We're good. Free and clear. Way to go, guys. Way to go. We did it. Um, and then last week, uh, we had a meeting with Commissioner Tucker again and then the county roadmaster. Um, I had noted in my report that we were going to have it because our report was written before the meeting was scheduled. Um, so we talked about road signs, of course, the uh, modern miracle of sign pollution. That was very interesting to learn about. Uh, there is a possibility we can put like a slow, you know, children in the park sign right next to that, but that's about all that they can do um, without uh, incurring a massive amount of civil liability that will break everybody. So we don't want to do that. Um, was it? Yeah, so there are a couple things they can do to help us um, with uh, speed patrol. We had the sheriff uh, deputy sitting out there today, uh, and like they said, he got a bunch of people. Um, they do have a trailer where they can like monitor where people come into town and get some data about that, and then you get a better job of like issuing tickets and things. And they say they usually like to do that in once a year in certain places, and doing that will kind of like it kind of gets people. Oh yeah, can't can, can we, we can't drive. Super fast through Sodaville, so let's let's not do that. Last time they had that trailer, they put it down there in the middle. Where mm -hmm. That's where it is, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh well. Looks there awesome. you go. Um, <clears throat> we had a, a few other things with him. I was like, so we went with him. I was like, so you've done stuff for us. What can we do for the county in general? He had a few things. Um, one was that uh, the Council of Governments is trying to. Uh, build up the child care presence in the community because Lynn County has a really big child care gap. Uh, state law does allow like very small child care operations to happen like in home. So like if there's like a certain number of kids, it's like less than 10 or something like that. You can operate a child care center without, you know, the, the rigor and role of doing something much bigger. And uh, there are a couple of workshops coming up next week. So I sent everybody in town uh, that is on our emailing list. Um, a schedule of, uh, you know, you can attend these workshops and learn how to start a small in-home child care practice. Um, that's a big one. Um, we also talked about some of the kind of uh, emergency problems that we, we could potentially face given where we are. Um, if a Cascadia subduction event uh, would like destroy the dams up in Sweet Home and that would cover like, so I think Lebanon and up to like 20 feet of water depending on where it is. Yeah. Um, and he said, uh, if that happens, he's coming to Sodaville <laughs> uh, because this is the only place that's going to be out of the floodplain. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. He, he talked about you know the the, the potential of wild wildfire as well could be pretty bad. I and mean, we don't really survive in that scenario, but um, I, I think it kind of drove home the the need to get the community center building built so it can just be a building there that can just be used exactly so that gives us more more uh, flexibility as we try to find money to get that thing rehabbed um because we need to we need to do something with it and we need to do something with it soon um so i go to the city managers meeting for the area once a month that's uh, organized by the council of governments and i really drove home the need to like do some advocacy um, legislatively in the capital, and um, the, the executive director said that's that really does fall within kind of what they want in the strategic plan. They want to be out about you know jointly advocating for the community more in Salem. So um, I'm going to help them kind of prepare. Here's how you would do it: a, a brief on how to have the local governments together lobby in Salem for us. So um, that would be good. Um, that will be something. Hopefully, we get done you know at the end of the year, and then. In the 2020 session, it's only 30 days, so we can have a kind of practice run for here's how we should go and help each other out in that building. Um, the League of Oregon Cities has its lobby day next Wednesday, so I wanted to see if anybody wanted to come to that. Uh, it's going to be all day. all day. Yeah, and you could go for, you know, like there's a usually like a rally at the beginning, and then um, there will be meetings throughout the day with local legislators. So. 
Um, I can send you the schedule if you want, and you can let me know if there's a part of it you want to attend. Okay. Yeah, I will follow up with you on that. Um, last one, like I said, I have some potentially positive personal developments. I bought a house today. Um, and um, I, it's, there's a good chance my fiance and I might get married within the next um, uh, month or so. So I, I still have the other half of my vacation time to uh, use by the end of February. So I wanted some flexibility from the council to be able to kind of use that as needed to take care of some of these things. Uh, of course, I, I make sure I don't just leave suddenly. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, to uh, just make sure I'm taking care of business and getting things all settled in. So, oh, congratulations. I like your emails. Oh, thank you. And you can let me know if you need me to pick up the checks and stuff. Exactly. We'll do that. We'll give you one day for anyone. <laughs> one day for anyone. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I have a, um, uh, Mark Twain said no man's property is safe when the legislature's in session. And his schedule is not safe. Um, so we'd probably get married now and have to have it like in the summer. Uh, because I'm working like 50 to 60 hours a week now. So it's kind of, um, yeah. my three different jobs. Uh, yeah, so that's all for me. Any questions? Thank you. Well, the yeah. water loss for what the December was 5.02%, um, which is still better than the 15 years we have to be able to make it to 13%. Um, the wells have been recovering. We stopped pumping water the last day of December. And last weekend, the wells actually popped off the reservoir. Uh, that's all. Um, I'm requesting, and I think our president has a name. Yeah, to remove water restrictions. Um, I'm not sure the council really needs to be involved in enabling or enacting water restrictions and releasing them because if I need to do it. I can't wait three weeks for you guys to vote on it and say yes or no. Mm -hmm. You kind of hired me and trust me to run that kind of thing. So I don't, I think I should. Just have the authority to say that you see your water dropping. Yeah, it's just really good. I would just ask that you make it a four and a half. Absolutely. Everybody in the community just said, hey, I do this. I don't think they need to come back. Yeah. Well, that's your area. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I think that's a, if you've been in the community and you've experienced it, you know it. Yeah. So, and I don't want to wait for you. Right. Restrictions, rates are raised, and everyone is heading against the door, tag on the door, and right there is taken care of. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, and that's, yeah. that's why yeah. I think the happy medium is to have the ordinance say the public works director has discretion to enact water restrictions and then have the council at the next meeting follow up and verify yes, we're good with this. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's good as well as we can do the fund immediately. The, yeah. You know, it's getting enacted and we don't have to wait till we come to council. Yeah, we, we, we have to get a vote. Tell us what to do the water restrictions and we vote on him being in the town. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's a good way to go about it. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, I will just have uh, an amendment to okay. the ordinance prepared at the next meeting. I'll make sure JD looks that over as well to make sure he believes he's got the maximum discretion. So I think I'm something else to bring up. We don't have a chair. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
look at the top five each month, and they're almost what you're trucking in water with. Okay. Yeah. So, so there is a way you can define. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next way you mentioned, I think, made a work party. Mm -hmm. yeah. You could sit down, Alex, and present what the actual tiers are. But I don't know what they are. I'm not sure one's 2,500 gallons, forty-five dollars. After yeah. that, I have no idea. Yes, yeah, that's, uh, that's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. And I just want to make sure that there's a way we can. Yeah, and then the parts the churches don't do much. This one uses a considerable amount, but they, you know, maybe we go talk to them and ask them to do see if they can get a grant to replace their old toilets. Mm -hmm. And toilets will probably help a lot with them. Another thing that I think is kind of quirky is that. Our first tier is 2,500. Our next one is 5,000. That's another 2,500. The next tier is 5,000 rather than 2,500. Yes, we need to work on that. So more. that's yeah. that. it makes yeah. more sense to keep them at 2,500 increments. Yes. So, so we have to have any we're going to have to put them again, whatever. Yeah. We've talked about this for quite a while. Yeah, so, so we can. Sure. Mm -hmm. So we raise the price on. The higher tier, you can also get the chance to fill out for a discount based on having either with lower income and a large family. So that way you're not stressing about hitting this family that are already having a hard time. They have a choice to apply for still stand lower rates. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 For the people who are using a lot, are they kind of their payments? Are we doing a good job on going out to the people? So for everybody who's paying their water bill, are we going out and we're doing a good job and for the people who are behind their payments? Because they really the utility assistance. We broadcast that. It's on the Facebook. So, you know, we need to make sure we're targeting correctly and we're recouping money. Yeah. We sent out 12 uh, payment letters today. Go ahead. Yeah. So a few people came in to resolve that after that. Um, yeah, and uh, there there's some people consistently are like three months out from payment. Um, so yeah, but they'll, they'll get there eventually. It's just gonna. Yeah, yeah, uh, every. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would like to let the council to be okay to go to Tun River March 6th through the 10th for the annual technical conference. There is money in the budget for that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, there's absolutely budget for it. This will be a good one for him. So, um, the PLC, they have two permits. So, we're going to open the contract review board here for this one. So, you're going to have to download it and do it on your cheat sheet. Okay. Oh, that's right. Okay. Is he done? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, so you can ask a couple more questions when we get to the PLC part, which is going to be next, basically. It's going to be open as a contract if you work here. So, you can ask your questions and then the mirror will get on this. I saw a question on the street. I saw a link down in town. 
as of last week, that was not going to be all the records on the level for your returning with you if we're talking about I can give you some context for that. We have 75,000 ARPA funds. I think we, we talked about using some of it for PLC and some of it for um, street grading. Um, so at the ARPA, the, sorry, the PLC is a thing that needs to get done first. And I think what's going to be prudent for us is to just use whichever one gets recommended at the hearing and then I'll have to do some budget tweaks after that to see what ends up being left over and use that to form the labor plan. We have to spend it all by June 30th. So yeah, that's that. All right, now you can gavel in the order the public hearing of the city of Sugardale contract. Now, we request that the staff would view the contract under consideration. Request council discussion. Uh, yeah, so it starts off with. So now you can present. Did you get the copies of the proposal? The North Coast one started out at 50,000. Councillor Hensley got that down to 4179. Was this the one that put the email that said if you don't respond to videos? Yeah, we, we figured that. We fixed it. Yeah, yeah I saw that. We got clarification on that. Yeah. The other one, Jimco, they are basically the same thing. Uh, minus the Studio 5000 behind the software. Is that correct, Judge? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty easy. So, and they're 25000 If we go, which I don't know. If we go to Studio 5000 design software, that's going to be about 30,000. So, so 10,000 left, but then that's one either way. But there's another little P that goes on top of that too for calculating. Okay. So you have to buy the software, and then you got to maintain the, you know, the, the newer place. You don't have to maintain the license plates. Yeah, you got to maintain the license. Okay. But you don't have to buy the software. Once you to buy it, buy some different things. You know, my only thought on that was, you know, if you're going to get the software, you might as well get a new computer along with it. You right. know, it's capable of running faster than a 14 k one. Councilor Hensley is kind of like I said, he's working with me on some of this and helping out with quite a bit of it. So, my, my personal recommendation is the lower bid, Jim Cup. No, I agree. I, you know, I mean, like I said, JD did a good job because at first it was pretty vague as to what they were doing, and, and it seems like, you know, I mean, seems like they're going to be a lot easier to work with, and not not as rigid as as what Rockwell would have been. Right, and they're out of Lebanon, so any problems we have, they're right there. And I think they'll be a good partner going yeah. forward to to help support it as well. So that's that's my thoughts. So this is the one that we also need a computer to. So it'd be the twenty five k, the ten for the software and a computer. It's about forty five hundred to five thousand for the software, and you know what. Uh, 1200 for a computer, if that, that's that's not high. So it'd still be lower, less than uh, 35K, about 31, 32. The software is not necessary. You know, the main thing with it is, is that, you know, once you get the program or something like that, and if you get a small little glitch in the program, um, you have a way to go back in there and kind of reference it. Uh, it gives you kind of eyeballs into the, into the program. 
And it also gives you the opportunity to back that software up on site. So Which what would happen? Have that now. We do have that, but Stan corrupted the file yeah. and screwed it up. So um, had it we had it at one time. Because I got copies in order to get yeah, these guys. Yeah, you got it from Jeff. So, yeah. I mean, my recommendation is that we do carry the software because, I mean, you can, Jim Cook can come in, write the program, and leave you a thumb drive, but you can't see what's on it unless you have the software. So, mm -hmm. and to ask a stupid question, these will work with our new meter. No problem. Yeah, it has nothing to do with the meter. Okay. It controls the pumps, yeah, it okay. controls the wells basically, and the reservoir. <laughs> And it gives JD an interface uh, to be able to go and set times and uh, schedules and stuff like that. Can you remote that? I can access? be from the computer. <laughs> Possibly. But I don't know that I need that. I'd rather have the remote access with the meters. But... And, and since they're talking about you know security <laughs> and domestic terrorism on waters and power plants and whatever, is there anything within these systems that go, hey, Something's going on. Any kind of alerting? Um, there's capabilities of that. Yeah, I mean, you know, with this PLC upgrade, I mean, you can put flow meters on there. So if something takes off, you can detect flow rates, right? Because you got an analog card that you know will detect that signal coming back. So you can set those up. You know, depending on the hardware that you put in the system to monitor these. And you know, there's. Uh, there's more to it, like an OPC software, which is a third party software that can integrate with this. That if something like that happened, they could send out a text to any one of us saying that we got a problem at the well, right? So somebody needs to go take a look at it. So, you know, those are some of the things that with this migration, you know, and coming into the 20th century, 21st century, <laughs> that, you know, we'll be able to monitor our systems much better. I understand it's a push of some sort. But yeah, but like say, I mean, mean, to get to that point, you'd have to have, you know, some type of a, you know, electronic flow meter that's going back. And I, there are a couple of them up there already. They're not functioning very well. But the other thing on the Jimco bid or proposal, they put option one and option two. So we do not want option two. So when I, when I, Except their offer is going to be for option one, not option two. Well, I was just going to quiz. Is that the same price? Doesn't matter. All right, they are the same price. Okay. Right? Yeah. Option two is basically an obsolete yeah. type of hardware. It's right? not as obsolete as what we have next. <laughs> no, 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 no. But it is. It will be migrated out. It is. Three to five years. Right. <laughs> okay. so, any questions? So just to add from a budget perspective, the the North Coast is forty thousand, right? And then Jim goes. I would go thirty. Thirty is very good. Yeah, I would go thirty because we're probably going to want to get the Studio Five on some software. Okay, just so call. We have seventy-five thousand in ARPA funds that we have to spend. So spending more money right now is a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, if I just want to make sure we're yeah. yeah. If if uh, if it comes down to cost, we can spend more money. It's fine. Uh, because the less money we spend, the more we have to figure out what to use it for. Um, streets, streets, streets. streets. I just want to make sure we have a a, a conscious awareness. That's of something too, off this subject, the I would like to get with council sometime and discuss the public-private road jump. Please. So that's something that we need to discuss and figure out how we want to possibly change that if we can. You mean the big potholes up there? <laughs> Yeah, but I can't touch because they're private. Depends which depends which part of the road you're on. It starts out St. Louis, then Ridge, then Ridgeview, and then Ridge Place, and and all. You drive and all. Yeah, it's got section of bikes. We tried one time trying to change that to all one name because the fire department comes out here and they run around the circle trying to find out where the roads are at. Unfortunately, each one of those road designations has a mailbox on it. The U.S. Post Office will not let us change. The names of the road so it's got to stay the way it is so but that's another yeah, yeah. another time of time but if they could not figure out how to get that we get onto a, onto a public road instead of a yeah. privately privately owned public access that'd be great i mean i don't want to go cheap just to go cheap on the software but it's, if this is comparable and you think it's good you guys are the experts then i like the idea of having extra money to do something else with like streets yeah yeah 
I think overall it's probably going to be 32, 33,000 to get the software and get a computer, right. you know, and get things. And you know, there might be some added costs that pop up that we don't receive. Right. It'll be minor that. after that. But, so, but yeah. I mean, after reviewing it, talking a little with JD and, and the vendors, uh, it definitely seems like option one is the way to go. So, North Coast is pretty much the same. Yep. It's pretty much apples and apples. Well, with that 41, is that software and computer? Yes. 10 grand. Uh, let's move on with the, the script. I think that'll allow us to report council discussion. So that, that's what we've been doing, basically. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Public comment on the contract? How old is the old system? Well, they've been about since the 1980s. It's been there ever since. Just about, yeah, they've upgraded a little bit, but not a whole lot. But oh, 503 years. processor, yeah, it came out yeah. in 1994, I believe. So. Yeah, it's done. Mm -hmm. well, I suggest yeah. if you're going to buy a computer, spend a little bit extra, get a really good one, mm -hmm. because then it's less time between having to get one later. Right, I agree. Yeah. 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 You want a solid state hard drive, hard drive and, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. you don't want a mechanical hard drive. Or so the money, that, that say, you say 30,000. Or you just be better off go up to like thirty five thousand, and if you don't spend it, does that that transfer right back into the let's say the road fund project? So uh, there there will have to be a few budget tweaks we do yeah. during the rest of the year pay for that. That is something I'll be able to figure out, but not right now. Exactly. So yeah, we're 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 going to be good with this, whatever decision the council makes. Okay. Yeah. Close this public hearing of the city of Sunnyvale contractors and board. At 8 10. Is there any additional council or staff discussion? Now for the vote. I make a motion. Anyway, except uh, <laughs> the, the proposal. Which one? Will we dispense with uh, Jim Drow proposal. Option one. Option one. Yes. yes. I make a second. We accept the Jim Crow proposal. Option one. That's your first uh, second as a counselor. So, <laughs> pretty soon you'll be the one moving. So. <laughs> there we go. I'm down to back down about making motion studies, think me on this stuff. <laughs> All right. Business RFC. Oh, yeah. So the next one on the agenda is going to be. Um, sorry, so that's item 10 a. The, uh, the RFP is item 11 B. So next up is 10 a reorganization. Yes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, not no, no. So reorganization. Yeah, so we have to vote on everything again. So we have to do a few things. We have to elect the council president because uh, that's elected every two years. Uh, we have to elect a sergeant at arms. Um, there isn't a specific term yet, but this is reorganization, so you'd really want to be doing that anyway. Uh, we need to have the mayor appoint an official assistant to the mayor. That is just the, the title for the procurement officer in our procurement ordinance. That's something the mayor has to um a point that's not subject to council confirmation uh, but we like to do it during a public meeting so everybody knows who he chooses unless he wants to be the procurement officer um there we get to see um we need to appoint a board of director member for the cascade west council of governments and an alternate um, my recommendation for that would be have me be the alternate it's supposed to be a forum for elected officials but you want to fall back and i'm the guy who ends up working with the most after the designee so um that'll be that but that'll be up to you um lynn county uh, housing rehabilitation partnership um i kind of automatically was that because they just kind of need one person from each one to do it but we want to make sure that the mayor is appointing somebody who is the designee to that it has one meeting every year um, it's like 15 minutes long but still the mayor appoints people and the council confirms um Eastland Utilities Cooperation Council. Um, our public works director is the designate for that one. Uh, he's also the vice president, so um, uh, it, it'd be kind of rude to take him out of that one. But again, the mayor makes appointments and the council confirms. So uh, League of Oregon Cities, uh, small cities meeting. So that's not one we vote on. Um, the idea is that um, every few months there's a meeting of the small cities in the region 
Um, Councillor Olivares has been coming with me to those. Um, so we want to make sure the council just kind of has consensus about who they want going with me uh, to those. Um, we need to vote on checking account signers. We'll have to vote to officially to remove Councillor Meritus Jackman and uh, see if we want to take off Councillor Olivares or keep her on. And then we need to add the mayor, of course. We also need to do that with the state pool account. And that's uh, those are the main things. We have a little bit of a discussion on some kind of council roles for who leads the staff about certain things. So uh, the point's away, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> who would like to nominate for a council president? And anybody can make a nomination. The, um, the nominee just has to accept the nomination. You're not one. No, I Yes. Yeah. Oh, he just has to accept it. Yep. So, yep. So we just need to uh, count the A's and D's. All in favor? Congratulations, Council President Perry. <laughs> uh, same with the Sergeant at Arms. Anyone can make the nomination. The nominee just has to accept it. Um. So Robert's rules looks at the sergeant at arms as a uh, a, a kind of <laughs> no, a a backup uh, somebody who helps the presiding officer maintain order um, and can kind of back in. You're not um, at arms. You're not really acting to uh, But the idea is to have them be somebody on the council who's willing to help the presiding officer maintain order. <laughs> anybody who's nominated can accept or reject if the nomination is rejected then there's nothing that anybody else could do I, I would okay all right I'd rather you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like to blur it out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Next one is uh, the appointment of the assistant to the mayor. Uh, for I was the assistant to Mayor Perry. Again, this is the procurement officer. There's nothing special. There's nothing. I don't get additional money for it. It's just part of my job description. Um, so Mayor Lewis can just say, Alex, you're the procurement officer, or you can say JD is, or you can say anybody else is, and I just have to say yes. So who would you like to be assistant to the mayor? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, so the next one uh, is the Council of Government's Board of Directors member and the alternate. So currently that is uh, Councillor Olivares. Um, I think personally, this would be a good one for her to keep doing because she's been doing it. And I think that'll be a good one for her to do. She's also been doing a ton of stuff. <laughs> so of all, the, of all the roles where she's been doing, and I think she could continue, I personally think this would be the best one for her. She's been really good helping me kind of Transition in there, so yeah, I appreciate it also. Yeah, so the mayor has to appoint. And you are the good term. So, yeah, and then you have to officially appoint the alternate. So, I think I would be good as an alternate uh, because I also spend a lot. I, I, work with Ryan and their staff a lot just on the services they offer I go to city manager meeting that's why I think I would be good as an alternate but the mayor has discretion to appoint any city official that wants so he can appoint JD he can appoint Roger he can appoint anybody so I just believe Alex had 
No, sorry. So this is. Oh yeah, that's the next item. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so there needs to be um, a motion to confirm the college nominations for Adina and me. I think the motion will be accepted. Adina and Alex have been appointed to the EWP Home Team Board of Directors. All right. The next one again is the Lynn County Housing Rehabilitation Partnership. Anybody wants to go to a 15 minute meeting every year? Feel free. Um, I did it this year, so I think I'm in probably best position to do it again. So, all right. We'll leave a motion to approve the confirmation. I need to motion to approve the Allen's for the Lynn County Housing Utilization Partnership. Next one is EOUCC. This is JD's one time every month where he gets to meet with his. There we go, quarterly. Yeah, so the mayor will have to appoint JD again, unless, of course, the mayor wants to appoint somebody else. But please appoint JD. And then there needs to be a motion to confirm. I think you needed to specify what it was for. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, 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 and that was your first motion, so hey, you're making up. Okay, uh, Next up, yeah. <laughs> uh, League of Oregon Cities. So again, this is not one we have to appoint or uh, confirm. It's just who wants to be the one who goes. To... All right, there we go. <laughs> um, all right, so next up is checking account signers. So we need to officially vote to remove Councilor Emeritus Jackman. Um, I know uh, Councilor Oliveras had talked about wanting to no longer be a check signer. One of the things that I want to see is I'm currently president and then I will do now there's currently there is the ability to go into the checking account and set alerts if any money is spent. And that's something I talked to the auditor. I want to wait for the production of the And since we are new, we're going to be able to support the baby for sure. So that's why I'm going to change this to the account instead of a list of it. And the other thing is that I don't think it's going to be able to do it. I don't think it's going to be able to do it. Yeah, so there is going to be a motion to remove Councillor Merritt, says Jackman. Uh, I remove Jackman from and the next one is to add Mayor Lewis to the account. And if we want to add another counselor to it, we can do that. Um, it's all up to you if anybody wants to volunteer or if the council is that. So, one running that would be three. Right. Yeah, yeah we can go three. Uh, 
Yeah, so there's both <laughs> ways to say that I'm not restricting you. You can make the choice. I think we're good with yeah. three, but I want to make sure. Yeah. 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 All right, the next one is the LDIP account. Same thing right now, the mayor is on that along with the uh, city recorder. Um, so we need to officially remove uh, Council President Barry and officially uh, in a separate motion uh, vote to add Mayor Lewis to the state pool account. So I make a motion that we remove uh, Roger Perry from the LDI account and add Brian Lewis to the LDI IP account. I'll second that. All right, um, so next up, um, Councilor Oliver, we want to talk about some kind of council role adjustment. Yeah, I, I, to step down, we're in a kind of transition. I don't know if he wasn't, and I tried to use the support system for the mayor and for the new members on. I don't think they're not sticking with any of our toes. And keep open communication with, you know, I go through the agenda and I read the questions. I just want to make sure that it's okay with our union person with the council if they still use me as an unquote if there's a question to find out something else. I think I'm going to over trust and so on. I'm going to go yeah, I'll add to that, you know, I, you've worn several hats in the past year, yeah. and as much as I've loved having you there, I do not want you to burn out yeah. at all, so <laughs> I'm glad you're taking a reduced role this year and things are being spread out, that's going to keep it healthy for everybody, so yeah. thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that's the end of that item. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the next item was item 10B. We already covered that. That was the city audit. So uh, your discretion, we can open up uh, item 10C, which is resolution 2301, ending water restrictions. We already talked about that earlier. We have water again. So you just need to have somebody uh move to adopt the resolution and then adopt the resolution 2301 ending the water restrictions second yeah and we are going to be changing that ordinance in the future so we have more discretion for our public works director to take the lead all right uh, mr mayor the next item is 10d initiating a zoning amendment this is one of those rigmarole things. Anytime we want to amend the city zoning ordinance, the council has to move, has to have a vote to initiate it. Then the next meeting we can preview it. And it's it's kind of annoying, but that's the process in the ordinance. Uh, our ordinance currently says we have to put um, uh, public notices in the Lebanon Express. They just announced that they're closing. So guess what? We need to put it in the news newspaper. newspaper. Yeah, there you go. See, so um, the council has to vote to initiate amendments to ordinance 1902, changing the newspaper of record. I didn't put a specific newspaper of record in there. Uh, that just gives us flexibility to research. I did look into the two alternatives. Albany Democrat Herald is a daily. The other one that uh, the city of Lebanon is using is a monthly. They get one issue per month, and it comes out in a way that will not ever appropriately to anybody about our meetings so my recommendation will probably be the albany democrat Herald, unless there's something what about the no. we can look at that uh what i would be doing is calling the papers and asking them about their circulation within the city so the vote itself so we have a balanced uh view of where things are um so I 
Yeah. Plus, they're they're the one they would they own the Lebanon Express, so I really work with all of their staff and people anyway. Yeah. So, all right. Somebody needs to make the motions. Um, which is to the ladies. Um, sorry, suggested the newspaper and records to the end of the Yep. Oh, next step. So there was an additional resolution that I passed out for the council meeting. That is um, resolution 2302. Um, that is our LGIP. Um, there we go. Yep. So that is something that I uh, it's really have added to this agenda. Um, right now we have about $95,000 in our checking account, 75,000 of which is um, uh, ARPA money. After this round of checks, uh, that's, that's, that's $12,000 we're spending today. Um, that'll uh, leave us with 8,000 plus the ARPA. So I figured we should move the money over um, now so that we have more than a cushion of $8,000 to spend. Um, otherwise, we have to wait another month, and I don't want there to be an emergency requiring something weird. Um, to clarify, this is money that we budgeted to have come in. Uh, all this does is move it into the checking account so we can use it. I'm not pulling additional funds beyond what we budgeted for the year. So um, this is money we're supposed to have. I just need to move it over. So that's the gist of this resolution. Yeah, my goal is to do it regularly throughout the year. Yep. Oh, next up. Okay, Melvin. Hey, they get they keep on giving total maximum daily load. Oh, I've had it up to here with the Department of Environmental Quality. So has every city in Oregon. My goodness. Um, we reviewed a draft ordinance review at the last meeting. Surprise, surprise! Is actually the model code we're supposed to use. So we're chunking that one and reviewing this one. I sent that one to our legal counsel, and that is something that is required to do for. Um, uh, approving an amendment. So our legal counsel got it and said, okay, I'll get it to you by the end of the day. And then they said, oh, wait a second, I can't do that. In a day, uh, she needed to talk to somebody with public works experience. She talked to our public works director. What did she tell you? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot that I have on record. Yeah. I know it's something that we need to call to require it. Okay. It's going to be safe. And at this time, I kind of went to the and you know, it's, it's, to me, it's very irritating. You know, I know you guys are dealing with it on a daily, weekly basis. Um, but as a citizen, you know, we do you know what they're trying to push through as a mandate. Um, to me, it applies. Yeah, it doesn't apply to this for a lot of things. What really irritates me is they try to push it down to the population, to the individuals, to the homeowners, to manage their own environmental control. And the way I see it, you know, we each pay a lot of money in taxes. A lot of money goes for environmental control as it is. And for them to try to push it down as an ordinance for the city to pass to make the citizens manage their own property um, without a lot of, excuse me, without a lot of assistance um, from them, either financial assistance or educational assistance is not fair. And it's not fair for the city to try to pass an ordinance that 
a lot of people don't understand. So my view is that, you know, I know we're trying to follow other people's mandates just because, you know, they didn't understand it either and they just passed the bill. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just, to me, I don't know if there's a deadline on this, but we need a lot more clarification on what they're trying to do, you know, to our city to make the people. They're trying to make us Portland and we're not. Well, they're trying to make people put culverts in their, you know, in their own properties and tanks and, I mean, sediment, you know, yep. landfills and stuff like that. I mean, it's just ridiculous yep. to try to, you know, mandate that this is what the populace has got to do. So unless they come up with a different plan on how to manage this or they're willing to spend those billions of dollars that they get each and every year on the federal level to try to help cities and communities deal with this crisis, they shouldn't force us to pass things that that just doesn't make sense. Agreed. And that I got off my soapbox, and yeah, this, but that started back with my predecessor. I wanted it already. What's, what's the consequences of not doing? There's a fine. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, it might be like five hundred dollars something. Like that. She threatens for everything. I every time yeah. talk to her, she threatens. Everybody did it all. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, it does not. Like I said, yeah. if you read through it a little bit, what they're trying to do, it's yeah. it's ridiculous. It's also very frustrating that this one person, the gatekeeper, has such a reputation that everybody says she's difficult to deal with and can't get any answers. And like a broken record, everybody has a boss. So is there anyone that we can go to over her? Or when some people maybe go to Salem next week, will they have the opportunity to... That's Right. To get in front of someone and say we're we're struggling, we have issues. They have to do it too. I mean, yeah. yeah but talk to the county commissioner about it and see if he can figure out some systems. That's the problem. The environmental people have so much control over what goes on, but like I say, they're trying to push it to your level, my level, and everybody in this room's level to try to do it for them. And it, it, it's just not fair to any homeowner out there that's got to try to figure out, you know, how am I going to manage my storm water whenever you live on a mountain <laughs> and water trickles downhill? Yeah. And you the know, way I, mean, I understand it right now, it wouldn't apply to you. But if your house burnt down, you rebuilt, then you have to go through it all. Exactly. You know, and they're talking about trying to put in like, you know, sand filled property to help filter out whatever right. leaches from pine way up. <laughs> upstream or whatever you know their fertilizer or whatever they're using up there right yeah. it's just to me ridiculous. it is ridiculous and and for us to try to pass this this bill um and, and try to enforce it um and they have penalties in there to enforce it and if you don't do what they say as a personal level you're going to be be fined and it's it's just not right no. so that's my record jeff hensley <laughs> so do us. <laughs> All right. Well, wow. yeah. Looks so like paying them off in pennies to how to like that. <laughs> I had an idea about how to draw more attention to how ridiculous this whole thing is, and it uh, came from learning about uh, a provision in state law that allows the mayor to appoint a special police force, and the special police appointed by a mayor are only allowed to deal with water quality offenses. <laughs> So the idea would be like, hey, you know how much we're complying? We appointed a police force just to do that. Um, now, that was that was an idea to draw attention to it. Um, I don't think that means we're going to start buying guns and stuff. Um, you don't have to buy the gun now. There was there's also some uh, definitely some room for confusion to that part. I asked CIS for stuff. Uh, would it have any effect on our insurance if we um, appoint a special police force that deals with offenses against water purity? And they said you're going to like shoot people for running sprinklers in the summer i said no 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 no, no. that's not what it's about <laughs> state law is very very specific about what a special police force can do if we found somebody like proactively dumping a bucket of mercury into the well then we could act is anybody going to do that probably not but i thought it would be an interesting way to go about drawing attention to just how ridiculous this is this is our ridiculous response we appointed a special police force um i think you know. that just opens stuff up <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't think it's I don't think it's a good idea, especially, I mean, most most lawsuits have to do, I mean, that there's a high incidence of law related and legal. Um, I just, I just don't think that's a good idea. 
Yeah, that's okay. We'll you don't have that. I mean, CIS said at this point they're not covering. So. Well, they said both yes and no. They were really unclear about it, and I would have to ask for more clarification. They can say the, the mayor's appointment of a special police force is actually not subject to council approval, but the financial costs would be. Like, for example, special police can only act under law if they wear a badge that say Sodaville Special Police. Uh, the council could say, we're not going to buy your badges, and if I don't want to buy a badge, then I can't <laughs> do anything. Uh, I can't ever be on duty as a special police okay. officer, even if that's added to my portfolio. <laughs> So what are other cities doing? Brownsville is trying to get all the cities organized to hire their own lobbyists, basically, in the area to basically start lobbying against things like this. Um, they had a, an article in the, the the Herald the other day about what all the, or what Brownsville is trying to do, um, because they're in the same boat with us. This doesn't apply to them. It's not it's not relevant. So. Um, yeah, there's there's not a whole lot of pushback. A lot of the larger cities can afford to just like pay a consultant to do it and then never think about it again. Uh, we can't do that. So another thing, if we're gonna kind of thread on to what, what Councillor Hensley was talking about, the council could just vote to not comply and then see what they do. I donate a dollar. <laughs> it takes 500 people to donate one dollar and pay it, the it, fine. It's, it's, in pennies. And we'll send it to DEQ. I had a friend of mine that had a tax assessment gave him a lot of problems. So she took $500 in there to pay her taxes in pennies to the county. The guy said, I would accept this. She called the state police. State police come in there and says, You're not going to accept this money. You don't have to pay our tax this year. He had to sit there and count $45,000 in pennies. Mr. Mayor, may I ask a question for clarification? When you're talking the DEQ and this that you're talking about, are you talking about? For instance, the three tier city where the water comes down and it gathers in my yard because I live on the bottom tier. Is that what you're talking about? That's part of it. That's part, okay. Because what my husband did is started at his fence line and built a ditch all the way down and put a pond in and put a big piece of PVC. And so he's saving the city's butt and he's saving the county's butt where they don't have to come and dig that out every year. Well, it depends That's what's going out of your pond though, right? Because then, you Just know- Just water I mean, from up here. I know, but it's contaminated. What you're going to be responsible. That's, that's what this is about. See, that's that's what I that's what that I'm gentleman over there that put all that gravel up on his property. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's encompassed in this in this ordinance. And that, all the dirt that you put on yours that came right down. I'm just saying that, I, I understand. I'm seeking clarification. Yep. yep. Well, right we now, it's very fish. In the, 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 we, there are no fish. Okay. No, honestly, we're trying to seek clarification from the DQ on what they want. And they're not wanting. And they're not wanting to clarify. They don't know what they, they don't want. They want yeah. asking for. They just want it done. Yeah, that's the problem. The like emails say, I've gotten boggle my mind. I don't but it's know. a lot different in a rural area than it is in a city community. And a lot of these ordinances are set up for like paved roads, asphalt, concrete. Um, well, they can just drills. pass the buck. It's well, like I mean, the where they've got you know, a drainage system right. that's that's controlled that mm -hmm. goes to some kind of a sanitation system to right. filter it all out. Okay. And they're trying to force that into the rural areas. And we're not capable of doing that. And no, now they're no. trying to drill it all the way down to the individual. So and that's what really irritates the hell out of me. <laughs> yep, exactly. Oh, my. And we fire us to put some kind of a yes, sanitation system. So anyways, that's my thought. I think, you know, I just want to wait for a while longer. Do we want to just say we don't want to comply? Because we could just do that too. But it depends on what the the repercussions of it are. We don't even know what that's going to be, and we don't want to say something that we don't understand what the repercussions of it's going to be, right? So I think we need to just kick the can down the road a little longer until we can figure out what that's going on. Or who to talk to. Yeah, the that's city's the, the city's table. next TMDL report is due at the end of the month. So um, <laughs> basically, I have to write yet another one of those things they're going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth? Last, uh, uh, someone to be at the next council meeting to explain this? 
I think that's what I can do. I'll be like, hey, come to the council meeting. We don't else. understand it. Not I'm going on this. I can't pass them. We're not properly comprehending. So can you please send a representative from your department, from your agency down here to explain to our counselor what we're supposed to do? Well, I think that's kind of what JD is saying as the person that's doing it. It's like anything, right? They give you kind of loose leaf, mm -hmm. let you just kind of go. You interpret it as will. And we'll just crush you with fines and whatnot. Exactly. And people just comply. Exactly. Instead of, I mean, kind of happened with the Second Amendment thing that happened in Oregon. We're going to pass a law. Don't care how you fix it, but here it is. And there's no infrastructure to take care of it. There's there's multiple other ones that, um, but a lot of it happens with environment. We just need to save it. We need to take care of it. We don't, don't care what matter how doing. you get there. We just need it done. Exactly. And then people will comply. Mm -hmm. And that's where they're at right now with yeah. us, and I just don't agree with it. So, you know, I don't want to continue putting work on Alex, but we need to understand what happens if they do not come. I think that's a good idea to invite them. It shows that we're trying to work with them. <laughs> but um, also, maybe put the money where your mouth is. Let me see if I can find uh, the reference to Brownsville. Are going to sit What's here and say, okay, I comply. That's why we come here, is to give our opinion. And I don't comply. Anyway, so that's okay. That was my thought. Come to a new because yeah. I mean, if you look at it, we thought yeah. we were doing the right thing. By Try to get somebody here at our next council meeting yeah. to explain so a little really bit really further. So, and then if it, we can't get somebody to come here and, and try to work with us on it, I, I agree with Alex and just just say we're not going to, just period. We're not doing it. How do you say that out? Is there a way to do that and then make them show why we need to play? They need to fund it. It's not up to you and I and Brian and anybody at this table or in this room to fund it. It's ridiculous how many hours you get to stand and stand with your face myself and Exactly. It's crazy. It's just just to comply with somebody who's being kind of intolerant. Mm -hmm. I just say no. <laughs> I won't say that on right, but <laughs> yes. start with that. <laughs> okay, well that'll be my next move. Go, hey, before we comply, we need to have DEQ come to present and explain to council and uh yeah then we kick the ball to them cool okay that'll be what we do next what we do sorry alex but that's just i can't wait to hear this civil servants really should avoid value statements the elected officials are the ones who should be talking about kind of feelings and opinions and like that but you said everything i was thinking so <laughs> I'm going to violate that ethical standard just for this once because it kind of needs to happen. <laughs> All right. Oh, me too. Like I have to write ordinances to protect fictitious fish. No, there are better things exactly, to do. We could yeah. be filling in potholes. Yeah, right? You could at least give us some fish, right? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, man. I need to get on my stop <laughs> You're right. Mr. Mayor, the next item is uh, 11B. So this is a proposed amendment to RFP 2022-2. So this was the uh, RFP we passed uh, a few months ago to try and get an engineer to figure out what to do with converting uh, Councillor Mary's Jackman's well. Um, nobody wanted to bid on it in the time that we had. Uh, holidays, yeah. So rather than putting a, a deadline on when submissions can happen, I wanted to have the council amend it so that submissions can be received at any point in time. Um, I did let uh, Business Oregon know we are having trouble like this, and they just said, keep us updated, let us know. Um, it's one of those things like they really need to kind of use it or lose it. So, but they they just want to make sure we're keeping them up to date. So okay. the uh, the amendments will be, uh, the proposal may be received at any time, and then the council review bidders at the next regular council meeting following submissions, as long as a proposal is submitted by 12 p.m. the week before a regular council meeting. Um, that would be seven days, you know, Thursday, um, and the council will vote on awarding a contract at the meeting where bidding firms are interviewed. Um, and the other thing that I found talking to potential people is that a lot of engineering firms right now don't really want to do piecemeal projects. They want to be our engineer of record and do all of our stuff. Um, so it could be that if we don't get anybody to bid on this, come whenever you want. 
project, we might just have to put out an RFP for an engineer of record. So somebody would you have to give them a retainer? No, um, they would just be anytime there's there's an engineering thing. Um, but as I actually talked to one of them about this, and they said um, when you get a company like that, they do often do a little bit of cost creep. Yep. It's kind of that they want to make money. So yeah. They make themselves the only dog in town. Yeah. So I mean, it's kind of like what we have with a lawyer. We have one lawyer. We don't put out an RFP every time I need to review an ordinance, which which makes sense. But I want to get to know a firm and the quality of their work before giving them, you know, a, a five-year contract to do every all of our stuff. Um, so Alex, so what exactly needs to be done on this? I mean, I do know an engineer over in Plymouth. Great. And you know, I mean, if I had a, a description, I could talk to John and, and figure out if maybe it's something he might be interested in, you know, working with you and JD on, you know, because I don't know exactly what it is, but uh, gotcha. um, what you're what you're asking for the engineer to do, and he will do probably a little bit of piecemeal. I mean, he wouldn't be, you know, committed if he, if he has the time. He's a small group, but okay. I can talk to John and see, see what he has to say. So the well we want to convert, um, there, um, an engineer needs to look at everything that needs to be done to convert it and then figure out how to connect it to the water system, whether or not we do need a reservoir. I think right now the plan is to lean towards getting a reservoir. Um, so that, that's something we'll, we'll discuss during the, the engineering, but we want a reservoir, right? Kind of, no, currently? We keep going back, okay. Okay, just wanna make sure. Um, so yeah, that is something an engineer would cover. How do we convert this well? And then how do we get it connected to the city water system? There you go. Can so, have that written? Obviously, yeah, there's documentation from, from Business Oregon that I would send them for what they're looking for. Um, and I would work with that engineer to make sure they get in front of Business Oregon to know what does Business Oregon want. Business Oregon wants to give us $500,000, but they want us to give them a plan first. So once an engineer looks at it, he goes, here's what it would, here's what it would take. Then we send it off to Business Oregon. I'll swing by and talk to John with him, you know, either tomorrow or uh, early next week and see if he'd be willing to give you one of you to a call and okay. see if we can't maybe progress from there. Sounds good. Yeah, all we're going to do is approve the uh, the amendment to um, the RFP and then we can officially allow him to call in because the official deadline was four days ago. Okay. So. I move to adopt the RFP I do have some information I like to share from today's COG meeting, the short version of OWCC and G. Um, that I actually saw in our next door app, but potentially could is going to definitely have an impact on the citizens of our three counties as we change to the SNAP. Um, and it's huge. And I don't know if anybody knows about this, but apparently with the omnibus bill that came through, the federal government, it's not Oregon, but the federal government has said no, no more extra payments with SNAP. So there are some people now with SNAP that maybe a family of four get $50 normally. Um, with the extra funding to the emergency, they've been getting 600. Now they're going to go down to 50 within like a month or two. It's going to be devastating. It's devastating to the people. It's devastating to some of the like food pantries. It also, there's a concern of the trickle down. Was it going to businesses that aren't going to get money from people for food? So is it going to impact businesses for closing? So that's just, it's going to impact 28,000 people within our community. So it's rather huge that's coming. Um, so that's going to go into effect. I guess February is when they started. It will go to the people's monies in March. If they have money still on their SNAP card, that won't go away, but they will go from potentially $600 a month to food way back down. <laughs> It was part of the margin. It was it's really interesting. So it's only money for a year and a half. Pretty much going for like two and a half weeks. Which made him believe it was going to be for long. And also, 
also related but not related is Medicaid, which talks about how there's infrastructures that they make these laws for that make no sense. So Medicaid is going to be changing as well. Um, they're going to unlink it from uh, the pandemic. And so the people who can get Medicare is going to dramatically increase to Medicaid. Medicaid. And it's, um, it, will, it has to be completed within 14 months. Um, they have all sorts of plans on how they're going to work with people. So let them know ahead of time to see what else is out there. But that's also a huge impact. Which, since one of the votes just came through for a law of, about universal health care, how well, that's going to happen, I don't know. If there's not going to be the Oregon Health Plan, it's going to be something that still exists, but giving the people the Medicaid that they need. So those are some really huge things that can impact. Today's meeting, we talked about some flyers some links to videos to help people understand this because it's going to be a dramatic hit to their budget for SNAP and Medicare. So, so they're going to get broadsided. Yes, it's it's just yeah. going down. So as soon as we get that, I'd like us to maybe have a link on our website and, and put flyers up to let people know about it. So the Medicaid thing going into effect? Um, they're starting it, um, yeah. and it's 14 months, but I think they're starting in January or February or March. It's like, 60 days to review it and 90 days to talk about it, but within 14 months it's going to That's be gonna done. Affect the um, the sorry, my brain just went dead on me for a second. That's going to affect the um addict community a lot. So, yeah, I have almost four and a half, almost five years clean sober, and I work with them a lot, and I know that it's gonna. That's why I asked because I could have prepared myself to yeah, yeah. be out there helping more. So. Yeah. Is there, there, is, there any, is there any suggestions on what they feel like a person should do to contact you? They, they're, they're bulking up their staff to be able yeah. to help. They're doing actual manual calls to restaurants, to grocery stores. If there's anybody that we think they need to call, and they're trying to really get to that. I think working with Sheba. Talking about if there's somebody who can be that package of not quite old enough to get Medicare, but you know, are there any kind of, kind of other incentives for the Medicaid part of it? But they're trying to be very proactive, but they realize this is going to just devastate a lot of people. And then with the 8.7% raise we just got for Social Security, that's already in our Medicare payments up to 160 a month. It went down. They were 170 a week. It went down. Five. 175 down to 164. But still, some people's went up. Well, it goes up based on your um, tax right. income, right. the IRMA, I think it's called. Yeah. But anyway, those I think we just need to really make sure that that message gets out. Mm -hmm. That's huge. And, and they say, well, you know, people got to worry about their budget. To take $600 out of your budget in a month, especially for food, which is expensive anyway. You but can't go to the store without. Spending a hundred dollars for food. That's for one bag. Yeah. 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 I want us to have that information yeah. for our community. Yeah. 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 And also to let people know it's not Oregon that's doing this, it's the federal yeah. government. Yes. Oh. If I can add one little spark of hope to this, we talk about our um, the Oregon Mayor's Association proposal. We need to talk about that too, actually. Do you want to get involved? Because we wrote a check for you to be in the Oregon Mayor's Association. <laughs> I have long way to step up. Well, I've already gone to it. Okay. <laughs> yep. So if the check's ready, if you want to do it. You'll do it again. Great. Let's do it. Okay. Um, the, uh, the proposal they had that we, we signed on to supporting was uh, give every city at least $50,000 and then, you know, more so based on population. Our plan that we talked about and that I've submitted um, testimony to the legislature for is that basically we'd want to be using it to help with um, assistance to people in the area. Um, so like kind of a canned good food bank kind of mm -hmm. thing added to my portfolio uh, with additional time here funded by uh, that allocation would be I would be spending more time trying to get something built up in operation that we could help with that kind of assistance. So we, uh, we already planned. There's, there's one one place we can go. We just make sure we we have to make sure the legislature passes it. So maybe one one bright spot possibly for yeah. sort of assistance. That's good. 
they did say back on the meeting that, that people would keep their benefits until it was completely resolved. So if they do it in 60 days, if you're talking about it's 90 days, they keep your benefits. That's good. David, you don't like my color coding in the No, I'm doing something. <laughs> 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 That's why I color it. I don't get my Wow. The council had a problem with me and the lady in the trailer up there. No. Public work does not. Well, nobody does anymore. It's going to go away, so I can do it. But if I were going to tie it down, I could actually have to train it up. I'm going to get on top. And those pipes, that is 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 that because we didn't want to impede on the city water system or uh, doing the construction side. But is there any ordinance or anything that says we can't leave that there for the family and the whole water for them to be able to use? Not in my mind. And they have to be buried. Because I think we were leaving it up on, on the ground. Many homes that have to have wells have those reservoirs. Okay. And then they have like no have sister tanks. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The county tied in with the water. Yeah, we were just no drought or someplace to have water. The water inside of it. I